welcome to episode 77 of the Potter Discussion. I'm your host, Oscar, and here on the Potter Discussion, we discuss some of Harry Potter's deepest and darkest theories, tidbits, and little easter eggs you might have missed and you probably did. On today's episode of the Potter Discussion, we have a Quizmaster episode, and if you're wondering why that is, well, I'm thinking of taking a bit of a turn with uh, the Potter discussion, and in the sense that next season, instead of theory after theory after theory, we might be doing some more discussion episodes, and not discussion about a theory, but discussion about a previously chosen topic, and those episodes would be very long, 45 minutes long, so I'm thinking about doing something like that. If you think that is a good idea, I would love to hear from you, the Potter discussion at gmail.com. Uh, for anything that you think you want me to do or not do, I would really like some feedback there. Uh, but other than that, I'm just going to finish out uh, the theory portion of the podcast uh, with a bang, and I'm going to do Quizmaster versus series, and then finish out the Dumbledore scheme with the Dumbledore scheme 6. So I am looking forward to this, and it isn't the end of theories, of course. If I stumble across a good one, I will definitely do it. And I think we should still keep the versus series and Quizmaster, just because those are really, really interesting episodes, and I, I personally really like to record them. So those we are going to keep. I think, okay, the occasional theory, but definitely focused on discussion topics after the season. And I think I'm definitely looking forward to it. I hope you are too. But we have a Quizmaster episode today. This is Quizmaster Hogwarts Edition. We have 15 questions to answer on today's episode. Uh, let's do this. Okay, question number one. How long ago was Hogwarts School founded? Alright, this question might be a little tricky to figure out because I don't think it was, you know, said that often of when Hogwarts was actually founded. We only really, you know, actually learned about the founders, you know, their items, all that stuff. But I do think, oh, in the second book... The second book with Professor Binns, when Hermione asked about the Chamber of Secrets, um, he gave, you know, a history of Hogwarts, and he said how long ago Hogwarts was founded by the four founders. So, if you can remember how long ago that was, good job. But the answer is 1,000 years ago, and it's... <laughs> Probably a little more now, but a thousand years is the rough estimate of how long ago Hogwarts was founded. I think he was talking about, um, you know, why Salazar Slytherin left the school and, you know, all that kind of stuff, all, like, the disputes. But moving straight into question number two, who founded Hogwarts? And the full names for this one. All right, this one's going to be pretty easy. I think the first names... They're going to be the easiest because it's just, you know, first names. Um, and the last names, oh, oh no. I think the first names are going to be the hardest because the last names are just the houses. So we have Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, Gryffindor, and Slytherin. Alright, I think we know Godric, Gryffindor, and Salazar, Slytherin. Those are pretty obvious. And Helga, Hufflepuff, and Rowena, Ravenclaw. I can, I can never say Rowena. Ravenclaw on the first time without really thinking about it. So those are the four founders. Nice job. You've got it right. And question number three, which founder left the castle and why? This one is Salazar Slytherin. We learn about this in that same discussion that Professor Binns uh, told us about about how, you know, Slytherin wanted the school to be completely about pure bloods, and he put a monster down there, and just crazy things happened with Salazar Slytherin. So that's who was, you know, who left, left the castle, because the other founders didn't really want that to be the case, especially Gryffindor, and that's where the rivalry really started. They were really close, Gryffindor and Slytherin, as we learned, but they grew very far apart when, when Slytherin uh, voiced his opinions about wanting the school to be um, exclusively to pure bloods. But that would have gone downhill as there so little pure buds left in the wizarding world uh, by the time Harry gets there. And although there are probably thousands, 
thousands isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. There are probably, uh, there's probably about a billion wizards. I mean, wizards and witches, a billion. Like, just think about that. Only, like, thousands versus a billion. That's kind of a lot. So, if... Salazar Sutherland's ways had carried through, I think that would have caused a lot of problems and very few wizards and witches would have been left because they wouldn't have become wizards or witches without being pure blood and getting into the school. So that's the answer. Salazar Sutherland left because he wanted the school to be completely about pure bloods. Number four. What are the house mascots? All right, this one is tricky. And... I don't know, maybe you don't think that, but there are a couple that might trip you up. So, we have Gryffindor the Lion. (laughs) The Lion of Gryffindor, let's just call it that. The Lion of Gryffindor. And then we have the Snake of Slytherin. I think those are the two pretty, you know, obvious ones. It's always the Gryffindor and Slytherin that are the most obvious. And then we have... Uh, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. I think Hufflepuff is pretty obvious too. That is a badger, but Ravenclaw, that one's gonna trip you up, and I'll tell you why. So, so many people say it's a raven, and if you said that, congratulations, you got it wrong. It's not a raven. It's I am so confused about why it's not a raven, but it's an eagle. The the mascot of Ravenclaw is an eagle, which is I just I don't I don't understand why is it that <laughs> why it's so confusing, but it's true. Ravenclaw's mascot is an eagle. I will never understand, but that's just how it might be. So there you go. Moving straight into question number five, where are the four common rooms? This is an interesting question because we do know where every single one of the common rooms are, but we just don't really know them off the top of our heads. We have been in just about all of them except for Hufflepuff, I believe, and... We just never really went there on a regular basis. Only the Gryffindor common room, which is uh, behind the portrait of the fat lady in Gryffindor Tower, that's the only one we actually, you know, just know. That's the only one we really know. But, alright, we should we should probably um, start, start digging. So, let's start with Slytherin. That's probably the second most obvious. In the second book, Harry, uh, Ron, and Hermione all take Podge's potion. Hermione has her big fiasco, but Harry and Ron push through and go to the Slytherin common room to confront Malfoy. And they go to the uh, Great Hall, I believe, and a Ravenclaw comes out of a door and they say, where's the common room? And she's like, oh. No, I'm not in your house, so I don't know. And but then Malfoy finds them, and everything just kind of goes downhill from there. But Malfoy takes them to the dungeons, and they go to that big wall, and Malfoy says the passcode, and it's pure blood uh, for that time. And then the the wall opens in the dungeon. They go to the common room. So the dungeons is for Slytherin, and Ravenclaw Tower is for Ravenclaw. Um. And to get into the Ravenclaw common room, you have to answer a riddle given by the door. So, that's interesting. But, um, oh, that was where the, um, where do vanished objects go, uh, theory came from. That's exactly what the door asked McGonagall, and she figured it out. She figured it out. So, very interesting, but, yeah. Now for the Hufflepuff common room. This one is a little more obscure because we never explicitly get a, you know, this is where it is, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna do the passcode, I'm gonna get in. Like, there's nothing to do with that. But the only, only time we ever have just a little bit, like a hint, just a hint of where the Hufflepuff common room might be is in the fourth book. When Cedric and Harry are walking down the hall and they are heading to their common rooms. And as we all know, Cedric was a Hufflepuff and Harry was a Gryffindor. So Harry sees Cedric going down towards the kitchens. And that is exactly where the Hufflepuff common room is. And this isn't common knowledge. Uh, this is like a, a deep article in Pottermore, or Potter Left, I should say, <laughs> taking it down or something. But um, on Pottermore, there is a article that is 
uh, you know, explaining the Hufflepuff common room. And basically where it is is right by the kitchens, right down that home corridor. And how you get in is you tap a code on uh, some b uh, bottles of, I think, mead. And I think you have to tap, uh, tap like, Helga Hufflepuff. Something like that, and then you get in. And, of course, we have never actually seen it, but that is where it is. Moving into question number six, in what order did we as the readers go into each common room? That's a good question, and I think we just listed them. Uh, so, of course, Gryffindor is first, and that was in the first book. Then we went into um, Slytherin second, the Slytherin common room. Hufflepuff, we never went into, so that's last, but we did, well, I guess, yes, as the readers, we did go into the Ravenclaw common room, um, and that was in the seventh book, but we never went into the Hufflepuff common room, so from most, well, first to uh, last, we have Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff. There it is. Question number seven, how do you get into each common room? Well, I think we just listed those two. You have a passcode for Slytherin and Gryffindor. You tap a code on Barrels of Mead to get into Hufflepuff. And you say a, you know, uh, a, uh, you, you answer a difficult and thoughtful question to get into Ravenclaw. Which fits all the houses too, so uh, pretty interesting. Alright, number eight. How long is the ride from King's Cross to Hogwarts? That's a good question. And it, that's because we never find out. We never, ever, ever in the entire story get a statement of it took this long to get to Hogmeade's station. Never. Ever, 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 but never. So, when is that? How long is it? Well, I have done much research into every nook and cranny of the entire Harry Potter whatever. So I happen to know the answer to this one, and the answer is eight hours. Eight hours, which is crazy to think it's eight hours long. That's quite the ride, but I suppose it is worth it to go from muggle life to, you know, wizard life, at least for Harry. So eight hours is quite the um, quite the amount but it is well worth it to end up at Hogwarts. So, eight hours is the answer. It's um, from King's Cross to somewhere in Scotland. All right, question number nine. Where is Hogwarts? This one is interesting because this is another one what we never find out. This this is a more of a Potter discussion, the Potter discussion podcast quiz question. Uh, if you can think back all the way, I think it must have been... Was it episode four? Season one, episode four. Where is Hogwarts? If you have listened to that episode, then you'll know. Maybe you uh, listened to the first couple, then came back to this one. But um, it's kind of difficult to <laughs> to know. So if you can figure it out, good job. I'm actually, I'll, I'll give you a second or two to uh, go to that episode. Maybe listen to all of it. Uh, you know, check back there, uh, wherever it is. So I'll give you a second to do that. I hope you enjoyed your uh, your second of research. You might have spent more than a second, but uh, the answer is Cairngorms Park. Cairngorms Park is a park in Scotland that is, you know, kind of a home for old castles, which is very cool. But there is one thing in particular that makes it very interesting, and in that it is a hotspot for... Well, old castles, but also strange activity. If you go into like this, the the street view of Karen Gomes Park, the one little pixel that doesn't load is one over is a uh, pixel over one of the old castles, and in the middle of a lake, with a forest on a cliff. Hmm. So, yeah, little interesting, but that is where Hogwarts is theorized to be by me and many others. The next question is, how many Defense Against the Dark Arts teachers did Hogwarts go through? I think we should just stick with um, when Harry was there. And while Harry was there, they went through seven full Defense Against the Dark Arts teachers, which is 
kind of weird. It's kind of weird to think that they couldn't even get themselves together enough to keep one for at least two years. So the first year they had Quarrel, who kind of disintegrated. Um, two was Lockhart, who got a memory charm cast on himself by himself and was sent to St. Mungo's forever. Then third was Lupin, who was outed as a werewolf and could never return. Then was then there was Moody in the fourth year that was pretending to be Moody, but was actually Bredekarts Jr., who was then sent to Azkaban. Fifth was Umbridge, who we all know was pretty bad and was kicked out almost immediately. Sixth was Severus Snape. He finally got the job and he was going very well, but then he got promoted to headmaster with a death of Dumbledore and then the Caros came and the Caros stepped in taking up the potions and defense against the dark arts jobs so there are the seven it's I'm still flabbergasted that's the word of, of the day flabbergasted I am flabbergasted that they didn't manage to keep at least one teacher for more than one year uh, it's crazy, but let's move on. Next question is, in which books did Voldemort enter the castle? This is another interesting one, because there were many years when we encountered Voldemort, but he didn't, you know, actually go in the castle. But we can um, rule out some of them immediately. So, he, of course, went in the castle years 1 and 7. That's pretty much, you know, a given, because, of, of course, with the Battle of Hogwarts, he went in the castle, and as a um, a head on the back of Coral's head, he went in the castle, which is weird, but, you know, whatever. Um, but he entered the castle 1-7, I think we can count 2, not 4, not 5, and not 6. Huh. 1, 2, and 7. Those are all the years. We didn't counter Voldemort, however, years 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. So, oh, and 7, of course. So, every year except for 3, we encountered Voldemort, but only years 1, 2, and 7 did he actually go in the castle. Alright, the next question. How many staircases are in Hogwarts? This is more of like a trivia question, and I love these trivia questions, because if you read the books a ton, then you know. I believe Fred and George said this in the first book. Hogwarts has 142 staircases. Uh, I remember when I first learned that, and I thought, wow, it's kind of, kind of a look like not that many. But it kind of made sense, you know, after I thought about it for a little more. And oof, we're flying through these questions now. Uh, ne the next question is, in which direction is the Black Lake? Okay, th let's take our time on this one. And by direction... It's north, south, east, or west. So, this one is tough, because of course we can't measure, we can't do anything. But there is one singular instance where we get the true direction of the Black Lake. And it's in the third book. Ron says it. They're going up to Trelawney's room for their first class, and he says... No, this is the wrong way. We're going blank because you can see a bit of the lake out of the window. And we should fill in the blank. If you can remember, I I am very impressed. I am so glad that you are a diehard fan and listening to this podcast. Thank you. But the correct answer is south. The Black Lake is south from Hogwarts and uh, facing south. Next question. Who is the only person who can operate in and out of Hogwarts? All right. In this one, there could be a couple answers. Hmm. So we know for sure that Dumbledore can operate in and out of the castle. But is that a Dumbledore thing or a headmaster thing? And that's the question we would try to answer. I think Dumbledore... Oh, oh, actually... We don't need to do any investigating at all. I think we know. Dumbledore said, as headmaster, I have like some special privileges. So, I think that's the answer to our question. If you are the headmaster of Hogwarts, you can operate in and out of Hogwarts Castle. Alright, the last question. Let's make it a good one. Where and when is the post? 
the morning post where and when is the morning post and this is a good one because it happens so often that we kind of just take it for granted and we never really dove into it but i think we can pretty much gather that this is in the morning on bre- at breakfast but i think we should try to narrow down the time so if you don't know the time well here it is the morning post is at eight o'clock in the morning and that's the same for everyone eight o'clock you get up you go have breakfast eight o'clock boom owls come in you get your post get your get your broomsticks you know get your candy so there it is i hope you all enjoyed this episode um if you really really have any feedback on the um previous episodes future episodes uh plans for future episodes wink wink um It'd be really helpful if you could send me an email. My email is thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. That is thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. If you could just scroll down, tap those five stars in your podcast app of choice, or even leave a written review, that would really help me out and it would help other listeners find the show. If you are on your podcast app, or even if you are on YouTube, I would really appreciate a like. Make sure you follow, and if you're on YouTube, comment which theory you would like me to do next. As always, use this information to your advantage, and I will see you later.